Drops are probably the most important shot to winning points at high level pickleball. Without them, it's pretty much impossible to move forward and win points from the kitchen. The catch to this though, is that while they look easy, they're definitely the hardest shot to make consistently. Don't worry though, if you know everything I'm about to go through, you should be able to make your drops at least 80% of the time. So let's get started. Helping me today, I have my sister Kennedy. So let's talk about drops. The goal of the drop is to make your opponent hit up on the ball so that you can move forward. So by hitting the shot slower and more arced into the kitchen, it forces Kennedy to have to hit up on the ball more, which lets me move in without her having the ability to attack. What's important to keep in mind is that we're not trying to hit the ball really shallow in the kitchen. We're just trying to make her hit the ball up. I'm gonna talk more about that later. And when we hit the shot, we obviously hit it a lot slower than we would on a drive, which looks like this, because we're not trying to win with power, we're winning with finesse. So a drop looks something like this. You can aim your drops anywhere in the kitchen. So here I'm going down the line, but I can also go cross court where I hit to this side. Either way, you can hit good drops on both sides. And you can also do topspin drops like I just did there. Just another topspin drop. You can do slice drops. Throughout the video, I'm gonna talk about some of the best ways to hit the drop to maximize your consistency, so stay tuned. The catch to this shot is that while it seems simple, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. In terms of what you don't wanna happen, first and foremost, you don't want to miss your drops into the net. So there I made it, but if I hit it too low, it goes into the net. And because I'm just barely hitting the shot over the net, this is something that can happen very often, and I'm gonna show you later how to prevent it. The next thing that you don't want to happen is you don't want to hit the ball too high. If you hit the ball too high, you make things really easy for your opponent and it becomes impossible to do a good drop on the next one because they hit the ball too hard. So you don't want to be giving your opponents high easy shots like that. You want to go somewhere in between giving them too high of a shot and hitting the ball in the net, which of course looks something like that, where the ball is bouncing in front of them or around their feet. To prevent these from happening though, you need to be aware of the errors that are causing them, which I'm gonna go through now. Before I get into that though, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button below the video. By doing this, you'll get suggested more of our videos and you'll help us grow the game of pickleball. So if you're really trying to improve, make sure to like and subscribe. So the first mistake and probably one of the most important that reduces your consistency is you're focusing way too much on your hands and not on your feet. So obviously when the ball is coming to you and you're trying to hit a drop, you have to hit the ball with your hands. And the main thing you're thinking about is your motion and your technique and all that. But if you're not in the right position when you're hitting the ball, it becomes really, really hard to be accurate. So I want you to take a second and imagine you're shooting a basketball, but every time you shoot the basketball, you have to be falling to the side or to the back. You're gonna be way less accurate and it's gonna be a lot harder to get the ball into the hoop versus if you were just jumping straight up towards the hoop. Right? So when we're hitting our drops, we wanna think about it the exact same way. We wanna make sure we do what we can with our feet so that we could rock forward through the ball. So see, I position myself early so that I can always move exactly forward towards my target. So I'm trying to literally get my body weight towards my target as I'm hitting it, and that makes me a lot more accurate in terms of where I'm trying to aim the ball. What you don't wanna do is hit the ball as you're falling back. See there, I'm not really on balance. I'm falling backwards, and you don't want to be falling to the side. So if Kennedy moves me out to the side, what I don't want to do is hit the ball as I'm falling like that. So you'll see, she'll move me out to the sides. Ugh, I'm barely getting to that shot. And those are hard drops for sure. But what I want to do is get to the spot early. So you want to get right where you need to be early so that you can move forward through it. And you want to hit, make contact with the ball a little bit out to the side and out to the front. So if Kennedy pushes me back, what I'm gonna do is back up a little bit, then move forward. If Kennedy pushes me to the side, I'm gonna move to the side, then move forward. So you wanna get to the ball early so that you can go in. You don't wanna get there just in the nick of time so that you're still following the direction you are moving. And the second mistake that'll greatly reduce your consistency is missing the center of your paddle. So if you look at my paddle, when you're hitting the ball, you wanna make sure that you're hitting it very close to the center and a little bit towards the top. So I wanna freeze frame right on that. You can see that if I'm hitting the ball out to the sides like this, my accuracy is gonna go down a ton in respect to the power. So I'm not gonna get as much power as I'm expecting. When you hit the ball in the center, like right around here, 
you should get exactly the amount of power you're expecting. So while I'm moving my feet and getting in position, I'm simultaneously thinking about catching the ball right in the dead center of the paddle, because if I don't, I might hit it in the net or I might accidentally hit it too hard. So I'm always focusing on getting that ball right in the center of my paddle. So even if the ball comes right to me, I'm hyper-focused on that contact point where the ball hits in the dead center. If I miss the center, see? I mean, there I shanked it, but the ball is not gonna have the same reaction that I'm expecting. So my consistency is gonna go down a ton. Let me show you a few more. So you're always sort of sizing the ball up, trying to line it up right with the center of your paddle. And looking at our technique, what makes hitting the center a lot easier is having a compact motion and not using any wrist or barely any wrist. So when I'm hitting my drops, what I don't wanna do is take a big backswing. So backswing is how I take my paddle back to hit the ball. I wanna keep everything on the same side of my body that I'm starting. So I don't wanna go back behind me like this. It should all be on the same side and I should finish on the same side too. So I don't wanna curl around like I would on a drive. You wanna hit the ball and you wanna extend your paddle out towards your target. And when you're doing that, you don't wanna flop your wrist. So it should all be very compact and most of the power should come from your shoulder and your body weight going through the ball. So as you see, I'm gonna be doing forehands here. I'm not taking very much of a motion. This is an accuracy-based shot, not a power-based shot. So I don't need to take a huge swing. And when you have a compact motion like this, it makes you way more accurate. So there's a way lower chance that I'm gonna miss in the net or hit the ball too high because I'm minimizing the variables that are hitting the ball. See if I do backhands, it's the same thing. So I'm essentially keeping everything on the left side of my body now. And that keeps me really accurate. And it keeps me hitting the center of the paddle. If I was to be hitting it like this, right? I might hit it too hard. I might hit it too high like I did there. So you want that compact motion with minimal to no wrist. So see very little wrist back to the forehand. And when it's harder, I take even less of a swing. So the harder she hits, the less swing I take. The slower she hits, I might need a little bit more, but it's still very compact with no wrist, no matter what. And the next thing that I wanna go over to increase your consistency on your drops is kind of a trick, and it's really, really effective. So what I'm talking about is that when you're hitting your drops, you wanna think about how high you're hitting it over the net and your trajectory and you don't wanna to focus too much on where the ball is landing. So if you focus too much on where the ball is landing, you might end up hitting the ball too high or hitting it in the net. So if I'm thinking about hitting the ball right at Kennedy's feet, I can do that, but I also might hit it through the net if I'm thinking about it like that, right? So what I like to think about when I'm hitting my drops is hitting the ball about a foot over the net. If you hit it at this height and you use a very arc trajectory, there's a very high chance it's going to be effective. So when I'm hitting these drops, all I'm thinking about is making my shot pass through this region at a slow pace with a very arced trajectory. So if I'm hitting it slow and it's a foot over the net, odds are it's gonna land right where I want it to. So as you see, when I hit my drop, I'm just focusing on the net because it's a little bit more challenging to focus on what happens after that. So all I'm focusing on is that trajectory, and the height over the net. And the next thing I wanted to tell you guys is that when you're hitting the shots with this trajectory at this slow pace, it's actually more effective to aim for the back portion of the kitchen. So like I mentioned earlier, you're never really gonna be aiming for this front portion of the kitchen. You wanna aim for the back, and there's a few reasons for that. The first is when you aim for the back, it just lowers the chances that you're gonna miss into the net. So it increases your consistency. And when you hit the back of the kitchen, it's totally fine if your opponent's able to take the ball out of the air like she just did there. Remember, what we want our opponents to do when we're hitting a drop is hit the ball up. So as long as I'm making it land somewhere near the back of the kitchen, that's gonna happen regardless of whether or not she's taking the ball out of the air. So, you'll see, I'm focusing on getting the ball at that height over the net that we talked about, about a foot over the net. And when I'm doing that, it's totally fine if the ball is landing towards the back of the kitchen. In fact, sometimes it's actually better because it forces your opponent into a little bit more awkward of a position. What I don't want to happen though, is I don't want to hit the ball too high over the net 
or so you can kill it like that. And on a side note guys, an important thing to think about is that if you can't dink like I am here, you can't drop. Because we're essentially doing the exact same thing, hitting the ball into the kitchen, but when we're dinking, we're doing it from a lot closer of a point. And as I start to back up to hit drops, all I'm really doing is taking a bigger backswing. So you see, I don't have that much space where I am right now, but as I go back, I'm still keeping it pretty compact, but I'm just taking a little bit bigger of a swing. So one of the best ways to practice to get better at dropping, if you're not really comfortable with it, is doing dinks. And if you can see here, we're actually at my house and we're able to practice our dinks because we have what's called the mini core, our new product. So if you're looking for a great way to train at home, definitely recommend checking out this product. Most people have enough space for something like this. And you can also check out our other product, the Dink Master, which is a good way to practice your dinks if you don't have a partner. And another cool trick to think about to increase your consistency is the harder that your opponent is hitting the shot or just the harder the drop is in general, the more you can increase your height just to give yourself a little bit of extra room for air. So if Kennedy's hitting a really, really deep, hard shot and I'm getting pushed back, maybe I'm a little off balance, I wanna go a little bit higher and stay back and defend for the next shot, right? If she's to go a little bit shorter and lower, then there I can probably be a little bit lower and more aggressive. So if she's to get me an easier shot, I can be a little bit lower in the net and that lets me move in a little bit easier. So what you wanna think about is that when you're a little more on defense, you can use height as a toggle to make things easier on you. So let's see that again. If she's going hard and I'm pushed a little bit farther back. I can go a little higher just so I make it in and I can stay back and try to do a better job on the next one. So the second she gives me a slightly easier one, I'm gonna move in. I'll go a little bit lower and then I try to get into that dinking situation like I am now. And another cool thing to think about in terms of increasing your consistency is what section of the kitchen you're aiming for. So throughout this whole video, I've been hitting my drops down the line or straight ahead, right? So everything that I've hit is going straight ahead, which is actually technically the least consistent style of drop. And the reason for that is as you draw an angle, so as I start to hit my drops more angled, I actually get a lot more room. And the reason for that is if I draw a line angled in the kitchen, it's way longer than if I draw it straight ahead, right? And that's just basic geometry. An angled line is longer than a straight line if you draw it in a rectangle, right? So by going cross court or more towards the middle, I technically give myself more space in the kitchen to work with since my ball is traveling at an angle. So if you're someone that struggles to maybe be consistent with your drops, you might wanna try going cross court or more towards the middle of the court like I just did there. Personally, my favorite spot to hit my drops is down the middle because I get that advantage of having the angle and I also reduce the chances that I'm gonna miss out to the sides of the court. So the consistency when you're going down the middle is pretty good. So it's a lot harder to miss than if you're aiming towards the sideline and you also get that angle advantage. And guys, I'm curious of all the reasons we just went through. What do you think the reason you're missing your drops is? It's really important to know what's going wrong so that you can try to fix the problem. So make sure to comment what you think is going wrong for you and how you think you're gonna solve that problem. Another thing I wanna talk about in regards to your consistency is spin, which I mentioned earlier. So it's important to know when you're hitting drops, you can hit a top spin drop where the ball spins away from you, or you can hit a slice drop where the ball is spinning towards you. To get a top spin drop, you have to brush up behind the ball. So I'm going from low to high, which rolls the ball up away from you. And to get slice on your drop or backspin as some people call it, all you really need to do is come under the ball with the bottom half of the face when you're hitting it. So cup under the ball a little bit. And in terms of your consistency, it doesn't really matter. What matters more is what you're more comfortable with. So if you're just starting off, what I'd like you to do is just go for a compact motion like this and whatever spin you get is fine. If you have a continental grip though, you should probably naturally get slice. So I guess what I'm saying is that it doesn't really matter what spin you're using for your consistency, it's more of a preference thing. So if you're a really high level player, you could probably hit both very effectively. But if you're just starting and you're trying to get to that 80% consistency level, just do whatever you think is better for you at that time. So there's not really one or the other that's better. It's more so whatever comes more naturally and once you get comfortable with that spin, you can start to work on your other spin. So maybe you're starting off with slice, and once you get to that 80% consistency point with slice, you can start to throw in some topspin too. But as I said, I think topspin will be harder for most people. 
just because there's a little bit more going on. So it's totally fine if you start off just hitting slice drops. What's important to remember is that you're never gonna make 100% of your drops. As I've said throughout the video, the goal is 80%. What you're really looking for though is progress. If you only make half of them right now, your goal should be 80% over time. This isn't gonna be an overnight thing though. To get there, you're gonna need to practice. So now we're gonna take you through some of the best drills that you can go through to get better at drops. So this first drill is a great way to get the hang of the drop if you're not super comfortable with it yet. So all I'm gonna do is start off by dinking, and as I hit each shot, I wanna back up a little bit more. But the whole time I'm trying to get every shot in the kitchen. So as I said earlier, you can't dink, you can't drop. And doing this drill is a great way to get more feel. Once I'm getting more comfortable, I'm gonna start coming back. So once I get to that back line, I start moving back into the kitchen. And once I get back to the kitchen, my partner starts to back up. So this is a two person drill. And both you and your partner can do this together to get the hang of the drop. So make sure to send this to a good drilling partner if you have one, and you can do this together. And a more advanced drill you can do to get better at responding to harder drops is this one. So all I'm gonna be doing here is hitting my drops, and as the rally progresses, Kennedy is gonna start going harder and harder. So eventually, hopefully, I miss. See there, I missed. But in the beginning, the person that's up will hit slow, easy shots so you can get some, some reps in. But as the rally progresses, they're gonna start hitting harder and harder so that you are challenged and have to go for drops in harder situations. So this is a good way to train yourself for more realistic situations because in a real game, your opponents want you to miss the drops, right? So this is actually a good way to train yourself to hit drops when your opponents are trying to make that happen. And if you wanna do a more competitive drill where you're playing actual points, you can do the game that we're about to go through now, which is called 7-Eleven. And the premise of this game is simple. The person that starts up has to get to 11 before the person that starts back has to get to seven. So we're in the same format that we were the whole video. Kennedy's gonna feed it, and we're gonna play a point half court where I'm using my drops and dinks to try to beat Kennedy in a point, right? So the point is always gonna start with me back hitting a drop. So this is a great way to work on your drops, but in a realistic point situation. So I'm not gonna just keep hitting drops over and over again. I'm actually gonna have to move forward and hit resets and dinks too, so it's more realistic. So in the game, the net person should always feed. And you're gonna go for your drops and try to move forward. Using my resets to get in. Now we're in a dinking situation. Ooh, and I got the point because Kennedy was a little too aggressive there. So now the score would be 2-0, and I'm going to seven, she's going to 11, so Kennedy needs to feed since she's the net person. I'm gonna go for my drop, try to move in. Ooh, she had a really hard one there. I hit my resets. That was challenging though, so I missed. Now the score is 2-1. This is a great way to work on your drops and your soft game in general. So if you have a good partner, get this drill going, and you'll be able to make your drops in no time. So I'm still moving in. Oh, she got me. So that's how you play 7-Eleven, guys. And what's cool about this game is that I've seen actual pros do it, but regardless of your level, even if you're just getting started, it's a great way to master the drop, resets, and your whole soft game. And guys, after you hit your drop, your goal is going to be to move forward, to use your resets, and eventually start dinking. So if you wanna learn both those skills, watch this.